Hey everyone. So, wanted to go over a few things for people that are brand spanking new to the game. Um, so, as you know, I started Farmed and Dangerous, a training alliance for happy hunting. And we filled up pretty fast, actually. <laughs> uh, on Boxing Day, I woke up and logged onto the game and it was full at 30 members so as you can see though we're a little shy of that now a uh, few people I think just tried out the game and they came to the alliance and then they didn't play anymore uh, pretty much logged off right after they joined type of thing and never played again so unfortunately we did kick a couple people and but that happened some um, I did another video a long time ago on picking an alliance and and how to kind of just pick one that's what your game's going to be about. So if you're going to be an active member, then you want to go for a place that's an active alliance. If you want to go for something more casual, there are casual alliances out there that just people play when they can and they aren't necessarily looking for you to use up all your war flags or your war machine flags and so you just kind of got to look for one that jives with your game type and suits you personality wise and it's the same for an alliance they're looking for members that are kind of have the same goals as they do so in here while we're not making the war machine a requirement at the beginning we will be uh, eventually and as we all level up and and as of right now war flags are yeah we're using as many as we can I wouldn't expect somebody that just hit level 12 to have 30 heroes but some do and they save their feeders so speaking of war I'm just gonna go in the war tab here so it was just myself and one other person last war so we got uh, five of us on the battlefield this time. So the system automatically loops you in for your very first war and I don't think too many people realize that so as soon as you're at level 12 um, so Stormbreaker here he was at last war he wasn't leveled up enough but now he's at level 13 so when matchmaking was going on it automatically looped him in so you have to play your first war whether you want to or not. So it does a tutorial for you and it, want, it wants to walk you through that and take you to set up your team and just shows you a couple things before war starts. But unfortunately you can't opt out if you want to. You have to play your first one. So that being said, if you don't want to play wars after that then you just unclick your participate in wars button here so if somebody says well just opt out if you can't use all six flags that's what they mean it's this checkbox here so uh, every war runs Wednesdays and Sundays at least for me in the time zone I'm in um, and it'll end on 24 hours later on Thursday and well it actually starts on Saturday I guess and ends on uh, Sunday late Sunday afternoon so before they run the wars they do matchmaking though so matchmaking will do a timer right here on the tab that I'm in when uh, it's getting ready to match you with your next opponent. So matchmaking on, ends on Friday is around, I don't know, lunchtime, I suppose. And what that does is loop everybody that's got this participate in wars box checked. So if you need to opt out, you need to do that before matchmaking starts so that just like the timer here, war starts in 9 hours 50 minutes, there will be a matchmaking timer as well. They generally give 
I don't know, 11 or 12 hours um, notice that matchmaking is going to start. And if you need to, you can uncheck that box. So that's very important. If you don't uncheck that box before matchmaking starts, you're going to be on the field. And uh, that, that matchmaking includes you, which means if you don't use your six flags, your team's going to be down that six flags. So using your flags is very important because an unused flag is pretty much a guaranteed zero, right? And it won't help your team accumulate points to be your opponent. So, and if you can't use them, yeah, definitely opt out. That's important. So, and each war is a different one. This one we got artillery strike, thank goodness. So you can only use a hero once. So what you may want to do for your first wars to keep this in mind you can keep your two star feeders so this kind of brings me to my next point when i didn't have enough three stars i used the two star feeders and as you can see i got ivan favorited here well i don't need to keep two star favorites so favorited anymore so i uh will unfavor him but you can do that to make sure you have enough feeders to do cleanup with um, or to hit a weak t the one of the opponent's weak teams with. And so it, may, it might only get you a few points, but it'll still help the team, that's for sure. Because you want to get as many war wins in a row as you can because you want to get into the war chest. So if you get five points for a win, then you're going to get that war chest in five wars if you win five in a row. And that's important because you get a lot of promo mats in there. Promo mats that are uh, not easy to come by, that's for sure. Uh, we've only ever, uh, I've only ever been in a draw once. So we got the three points for that, but that's that's pretty rare. That does not happen very often uh, at all. And the more wars you can play in means your participation level is higher percentage, which means uh, more items will drop in your loot when the war chest is open. So if you can participate in wars and that is something you like to do, then great. Um, it is... It is fun, actually. Bigger wars are fun. Uh, I've had small wars and bigger wars. Um, more, The more opponents on the battlefield, the more variety there is to choose from when you do your hits. And it is fun watching teammates, because you never know, right? I wish we could watch some of the battles live, but we can't. But it is fun watching one-shots, and if a bunch of you can get on at the same time to do resets, it is it does add another element of depth to it, where it is very it is can be very fun. All right. So speaking of filling up your war chest for promo mats, this is why you want to do that. Oh, I just went to the wrong tab. Uh, let me switch. Okay. I want to go into my inventory and show this. So you want to get your war chest filled as soon as possible if war is your thing because some of these items may drop. These do not come very easily at all for me. The five star promo mats anyway. So as you can see this is for purple. You need one memory stick for any color. doesn't matter which one you're trying, which five star you're trying to get to uh, last promotion it will need a memory stick and it will also they will also need a tactical mask so there's six of these though when it's the per color so i need six ballistic armor to even think about ascending or promoting another green and uh, i'll need six repelling gear for a red Six goggles for a blue, six speed holsters for a yellow, and six ghillie suits for a purple. So you can gather those up through not only the war chest, but the 
uh, rare quests that come up and it'll drop in your mission boxes as well they're they're a lot they're kind of more rare on the mission boxes and you also get them from the war machine loot and the rare war machines have a higher percentage of giving you a higher chance I should say not really percentage but a higher chance of giving you the five-star promo mats and so for the third a third promotion on a five-star you'll need some of this stuff as well and you also need these for your four stars so this stuff is important as well to uh, kind of give yourself some wiggling room when it comes to uh, who you're gonna pick to promote next so assault backpacks are for yellows this is crowbar and risk computers are the ones that go for both so at, at third promotion of a five star you need one uh, one each of the risk computer and the crowbar and then that switches to the tactical mask and the encrypted memory stick for last promotion and assault backpacks for yellow vest is for red surgical kit and i'm i've already used up the others for uh, blue blue and green so i don't even have any of that Th those items that's uh, a field camera and a defibrillator defibrillator is green field camera is blue i have tons of this stuff in my main account but I haven't built up that much in this account as of yet. So if you want these items, that kind of brings me to my next point. If you want these items on a regular basis, then do yourself a favor and do your alliance a favor and hit the war machines regularly. So ideally your alliance will be taking out at least for a week. Like you're, it's not really designed for you to get every single war machine out there because it'll keep going up in star levels and some of them will be really difficult and you'll be behind on flags sometimes to start out war machines because you you need it all the time right to the end of the previous war machine to get them and since you only get three flags at a time and it takes four hours to restore you may not start with all your war machines with three flags so you do have to let some of them go but ideally you should be getting at least four a week in an active alliance even if they're just starting out and the, as you level up and more your teammates level up and get more of a variety of heroes and can do color stacking with the war machines then you guys will get them quicker and easier and then you'll probably get you know six or seven a week or you can probably string together a whole bunch at once so every single kill you get on a war machine you get that loot and there's a chance that those promo mats will drop well when you're hitting war machines too you fill up this mission box which is fantastic because that's another way to get the promo mats as well because every five this fills up for you so tomorrow when we get the war machine I'll be able to get this and there may be a chance that I get some promo mats in it and it drops uh, it drops other loot that you don't always see like it'll maybe drop five or ten emblems at once too which is good and it'll drop flasks um, so some of it's pretty standard loot in the war machine mission box but often you get that chance to have to grab something good sometimes it's high weapons parts um, sometimes it'll be a three-star craft weapon which you need for weapon parts too and so yeah and war and the war machine are basically the two sports that the whole alliance can participate in it's the two things small giant offers as a perk to an alliance so if you uh, want to participate in those two things find yourself a good alliance and you'd be good to go there 
so for anyone that doesn't know, this is the fortune crate. So fortune crates will drop in your loot too. Now, um, I got an epic one for this so I could kind of pick my item that I wanted. And so you can change it too if you are going to buy it. Each time you add an item, um, each time a fortune crate drops, it'll add an item here and the price will go up too. Once you get to five, it will give you a recycle option. Um, somewhere down in the uh, left hand corner, it'll just say recycle and you can recycle all the items. You don't have to buy these and it will give you reduced loot so it'll look more like a, an enemy's mission box or a hero's mission box so by no means are you obligated to buy any of this stuff that uh, they drop here if you do want to buy it and you wait till all five then you can get this as well now in canada it's almost nine dollars to get the five items and the bonus mystery crate it's not really worth it to me at all especially for what this is like I don't know but some people probably buy quite a few of them um, the only ones I have bought was this first one with the epic crates it may have a five-star promo mod in them and I remember one time I got in the very first one I got uh, night vision goggles and I bought that, it was like two bucks. It was like basically half the price of that. And I'm like, yep, yeah, for $2, I'll go for that for sure. So that's kind of a bonus if you ever get that and you get a five-star promo mat in there. I mean, go for it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so that's, the, that's a basic rundown on the Fortune airship. So you can recycle the loot and get the reduce loot for free so no problem it's kind of a bonus way to get yourself loot so yeah you do want to see those you do want to see those fortune crates drop in your loot and they will you don't get the epic ones too often but uh hey free loot is free loot so and once in a while in these drive-in movies you'll get promo mats as well I think I had the only five star problem amounts I've ever had come out of here. I think I had a tactical mask and a speed holster. And that's in nearly two years of playing. <laughs> but you get, you can get crowbars, you can get the four star promo mats as well. And now they're giving out the emblems. And um, I've gotten quite a few epic and legendary skill books from the drive in. So. I mean, it's well worth taking the time to watch the advertisement. All right, so I think I covered a lot of what I wanted to talk about. So there is a lot of importance to hitting the war machine. There is, now if you're just starting out too, like food is not plentiful at all. I've said that in some of my other videos and it's really not, and now I'm, keeping it where it's more of on an even keel but when you're first starting out you get a lot of these missions which will give you gold so a lot of people uh, do a summons with it we'll wait until they have 300 for an, an epic summon here either a color one color specific or Right now our seasonal summons on and you can get some of the Christmas heroes. So that are only available during the seasonal, so once a year. Um, however, if you find yourself like completely out of food or you can't keep going, there is the option to buy resources in the shop. Now right now for me to fill my food, it'd be 806 gold. That's not cool. but. It does change depending on how much food you have, um, how much capacity you have. Right now I'm 1506k, so that would be filling me up about 500k. So it cost me 806, but you can fill it 
50% too. Same with the metal. Um, I never really found that I'm, I've been that low on iron though. Uh, iron and metal, I should say. Metal drops more than uh, food does when you're farming. So I didn't, and I didn't really have a, an issue with metal ever, but some people have an issue with never enough food. So there is this option if you wanted. And there's also the option to increase your hero cap. If you can't uh, get enough food in, you could increase your hero cap and hang on to some feeders for some extra time. But keep in mind if you do that, uh, the 50 will go up. I think you get five chances to buy it at 50 before it goes up to 100. And then it goes up to 150 gold, 200, 250 gold, depending on how much you ex want to expand your hero cap increase. But that kind of goes along with my what's the point of leveling up video that I did the other day. If you're, if you're steadily leveling up, then you increase the hero and weapon cap for free as you level up. So that, uh, that's a free way to get yourself these resources. Because the same thing happens with a weapon cap. You can up it five at a time, but it also jumps. So 50, 100, 150, 250, etc. So now the team cap increase. Uh, quite a few of my teammates did do this team cap increase. So what they do is I've never gone over the you get five to start out with and I've never gone over that so I've never ever bought a team cap increase but if you go into edit team here and you click on your fancy smancy named team here I got my sick of farming team here you'll be able to see the other teams you can use so I have pretty basic ones an attack for raids War machine right now. We had a red war machine up, so I stacked blue. My farming team that does the map for me and a lot of the quests. And then my main defense team, which always sits out there. So so you can name them whatever you want. Uh, if you're going to make this your defense team, just make sure that's checked that this is the defense team that you want. And then when you go offline, you'll always have this de defense covering you. And uh, yeah, so you only have so many, I have only have one character left. I named it Sick of Farming and only have one character left to use. So why don't I do that? <laughs> no characters left. So some of my teammates have expanded this quite a bit by buying team slots. Um, quite a few of my teammates like to fight mono, so they'll take all yellows in on a purple war machine. On a green war machine, they'll take all reds in. So they want their teams already set up, ready to go. So they've bought the slots to do that. And uh, one of my <laughs> one of my teammates names all his teams crap, so I don't know which crap team he picks how do how does he know which crap team to pick when they're all crap <laughs> for <laughs> that just makes me laugh <laughs> so <laughs> and then there's uh, another teammate that he's uh got all his war machine team set up so and that's what he, he uses the wmd war machine destroyer he's named those teams so he knows which one he's picking for which color war machine. So some people set up their war teams that they want and as they get four or five star heroes and level up more heroes, then they swap them out on their war teams. But for organizational purposes, I think that's why a lot of people do buy the extra teams. I just pick my teams as I go myself. So, But that is an option to use if uh, you want it and again it's gonna cost you gold to do it but you could always wait and do something like that later on okay and this kind of brings me to the last point I wanted to talk about briefly um, is favoriting and unfavoriting heroes and weapons so 
one of the guys in the training alliance accidentally, which is really easy to do, disassembled all his two-star weapons. And he still needs those because he's just starting out. At least they're only two-star weapons that he disassembled because it's so easy because you just hit that, disassemble, and then you, then you pick, right? So at least the two-star weapons are easy to uh, do that to, unfortunately, you never. You can't, that's just a slip, slip up to do that, so. But, if you favorite them, that won't happen. So, I have this one favorited. And it won't show if I want to upgrade this moss or uh, Manchester here. It it only shows the two moss screens that are unfavorited and unleveled. So you'll never accidentally level it up, and you'll never accidentally have the option to disassemble it because it stays protected once it's favorited. So if I unfavored it though, whoops, I didn't mean to exit. My bad. If I unfavored it though, I could feed it away if I wanted to. And I could also disassemble it if I wanted to. Is it going to give me a warning if I go and disassemble this one? It just says possible parts. Okay, what well, if I just hit disassemble? Okay, you have this selected to consume an upgraded weapon. Uh, so this is giving you a warning that it's a three star or an upgraded weapon. So at least there's that and you don't have to accidentally, oh cancel, you don't have to accidentally uh, disassemble or feed away any or three star or higher you will get a warning. But yeah something to think about there. Anything that you do want to keep just Put the favorite on it for the time being. You can always unclick it later, right? And same goes for heroes. So I had him favorited, I believe, for war when I needed them. So he's unfavorited now. I can feed him away. But yeah, so with war, you need 30 heroes. You can only use a hero once and you get six flags over the 24 hours to use. So just when you're starting out and you've just hit that level 12, maybe favorite some of the two stars that come out of your training schools. So you have them. Yeah, so there's a lot to take in when you're first starting out with this game if you haven't played any of these types of games before. Uh, we do have quite a few players that have played Empires and Puzzles and Myth Wars, so they're kind of familiar with the concept. Same basic concept with this game. I do like the tile play a heck of a lot better here, and I, I like the game overall better than those two games myself. So, But yeah, for anybody that hasn't played them, hopefully this helps you out and gives you a, a few tips on... Uh, what to do when you first start out and as always if I missed anything or if there's anything that you guys want to see just let me know in the comments thanks guys take care